Well, it's likely that we're still in the garden and Jesus is doing his priestly prayer. It's three parts. His prayer for himself and the glory of he and God. The prayer for his disciples and that they continue the work that's been given to them. And now the prayer for us. It's John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. I'd recommend any time you feel down or depressed that you read John 17, verses 20 through 26, where Jesus prayed for us. He says, I pray not only for the disciples, but for those who believe through their word. Now that's been passed down for a lot of generations, hasn't it? That each person that believes in Jesus because of the words of the previous Christians. Uh, he says, so I'm not just praying for the disciples. I'm praying for everyone who believes through the word of God. And he says, I'm praying three things. I'm praying for the unity of the spirit. Uh, that is just like you and I. And Jesus speaking about himself and God the Father. And, and that they would believe that you sent me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So we see that his, his desire is that they be one in a spiritual unity, particularly in the fact that they believe that God sent Jesus. Secondly, he says that they get the same glory so that they'll be one. <laughs> now, that's not the glory like a baseball player or a football player that gets glory. That's, that's glory of the Spirit. <laughs> and and it comes from me being in them and them being in me. Uh, that's Jesus living in us and us living like him in our life. Perfect unity. Uh, doing what he says and doing it not out of force, but because we want to be like him. Thirdly, he says that they would know that you sent me and that you love them even as you loved me. I think about that, a father's love for a son. Uh, he says, uh, I want, you, want them to be one in the spirit, just as you and I are. Uh, I want them to see the glory that can be in their lives in them, when I'm in them and they in me. And he says, I want them to know uh, and, and to tell others that you love me uh, and you love them just as you love me. All right, now verse 24. Father, I desire that they be with me and behold the glory you gave me. Now, where is Jesus? Jesus is in heaven. Jesus ascended into heaven. A and he says, Father, I desire that they be with me and behold my glory that you gave me. Uh, that's he wants us to be in heaven and you know he'll never deny the father and the father will never deny him because it says here very clearly in verse 24 because you love me before the foundation of the world and that again gets into the fact that Jesus is eternal he was in the beginning he is now and he always will be part of the Trinity Godhead and he wants us to be with him one day. What a glorious thing that'll be. Finally, in verse 25, it says, O righteous Father, I want the world to know uh, that I am in you and that you sent me and that you are in me. I made thy name known and these disciples will also even the ones that come from the my current disciples and they will love you and I'll be in them and they will be in me yes it's all about being filled with the Spirit of God that is God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit being filled with him and trying to be obedient to his word so that we might have the glory that he had in doing what we know will bring the fullness of life and that we will tell others 
so that this will continue until he comes again. Telling others about Jesus, telling others about what Jesus values and what he wants us to do in life and what he doesn't want us to do in life because he gave us those instructions for us to have the fullness of joy. But listen, the key verse to me, especially as I get older, is that Jesus prayed in verse 24, Father, I desire that that they be with me and behold my glory. One day we'll be with Jesus and we'll behold his glory. And we know what a wonderful thing that will be. God bless you and have a great day. You know that you can know that you're going to heaven. Most people say, I hope so, but uh, the scriptures in the book of Romans make it very clear. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, That is, sin is anything that's displeasing to God, and we've all done things displeasing to God, so we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God demonstrated his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5, 8. So we are sinners, but Christ died for us. And then in Romans 5, 6, it says, while we were still helpless, that is, we couldn't do good enough works to earn our way into heaven. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, Romans 5, 6. We were helpless, but at the right time, Christ died for us. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We all earned our wages, which is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, that means there's nothing we can do to earn it or deserve it. It's a free gift of God. It's by grace and grace alone. But that's not freedom to just continue in sin either. And the way that we receive it is in Romans 10 verse 9. If we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, I hope that you know for certain that you're going to heaven. I hope that you've turned away from sin and self, turned to Jesus alone, who gives by grace eternal life. Yes, there is some surrender involved, and yes, there is a, a turning away from sin, but that's not how we earn heaven. We don't earn it. We, do, we get it from him as a gift, and that's what the scripture says clearly. It's by grace and grace alone. God bless you and have a great day.